You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. is Love Never Fails with your host, Marilyn Redmond. Marilyn shares her experience, strength, and hope and includes tools to help you find your inner strength for health, healing, and empowerment. So now, please welcome the host of Love Never Fails, Marilyn Redmond. I am your host, Marilyn Redmond. You're listening to Love Never Fails, and this is Love Never Fails on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we're so glad that you're back with us listening again today, and if we have new listeners, you're welcome to, and I'll tell all your friends what a great show we have every Tuesday afternoon. And on uh, BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, we have lots of different topics we talk about every week that really does help your life, enhances your life, gives you some tips and hints of how to you might change this, something you want to change so it gets even better. And if you want to call in with your questions, it's 866-451-1451. And you have, can make any comments or questions that you might have. In fact, I was just informed off of an Internet uh, where I answer questions all the time. I've had over 6,000 readers this week reading in my answers to their questions. So feel free to give us a call at 866-451-1451. Today, we have a really special program. It's called 12 Steps into Grace. And I know you'll find some answers that will help you maybe understand what's going on in your life. Life. And if it's not going the way you want it to, and mine sure didn't go for years and years the way I wanted it to, it wasn't until I found the 12-step programs. And I'm happy to welcome you to this program so that you can find out from answers and information on our show you might not hear on another radio show. This isn't the typical radio show. We have all kinds of information on here that's kind of off the grid, so to speak. But I'm happy to welcome you to another program on Love Never Fails. And we're talking about the 12 steps today. And when you take these steps out of our past, out of our misery, out of our pain, out of our illnesses, then we get to walk into that grace, which we talk about but never really understand. And it's all the things we built are the barriers we built to that grace that actually stops us from receiving it. It's always been there. So we just have to get rid of whatever the barriers and the blockades and the you know, t the th things we tried to protect ourselves with so we wouldn't get hurt and get ourselves open to receiving instead of stopping what's coming in. We want to let that grace come in. So today is the steps to do that. So if you have any questions about how to release or get rid of what's in the, a problem for you, feel free to call us and we'll talk about it and hopefully help you. And uh, when the steps of 12 the 12 steps started uh, being coming recognized. Uh, some of you might recognize the name John D. Rockefeller Jr. And he had a dinner to actually introduce the steps of Alcoholics Anonymous to his friends. One of his friends there was Dr. Harry Emerson Fosdick, was a very famous minister at the time. And Dr. Fosnick made this comment. I think that psychologically speaking, there is a point of advantage in the approach that is being made in this movement that cannot be duplicated. I suspect that if it is handling, handled wisely, it seems to be in wise and prudent hands. There are doors of opportunity ahead of this project that may surpass our capabilities and capacities to imagine. So he was a very far-reaching person to see the possibilities and how wonderful these steps could be for all of us. And when I was growing up, there was a very famous minister called Norman Vincent Peale, 
And today you are probably familiar with his magazine, Guideposts. And way back in the 50s, he published a book called Power of Positive Thinking. And that's really what the 12 Steps helps us to do, is to move into that positive thinking. He said the way to happiness, keep your heart free from hate, your mind from worry, live simply, expect little, give much, scatter sunshine, and forget self, and think of others. Now, in his book of positive thinking, you would think that's a pretty simple statement. He actually sold 22 million copies of that book, people. People like you that are listening today are always looking for answers to improve our lives. In fact, I was so happy to hear uh, Norman Vincent Peale in his uh, guidepost. He wrote an article about the 12 steps, and I read that years ago. And he said the 12 steps will work for any problem in your life. And I took that to heart. And I actually tried to thank him at one point because it really did open the door for me to solve the problems I had. Positive thinking is a mental attitude in which you expect good and favorable results. In other words, positive thinking is the process of creating thoughts that create and transform energy into reality. A positive mind waits for happiness, health, and a happy ending in any situation. And that's what the 12 steps are so good at, is that we learn how to change our thinking into a way that's productive and will bring us the results we truly want. Now, if you are unfamiliar with how 12 Steps work, there's actually several movies out there you might want to take a look at. They're really good shows. One is called When a Man Loves a Woman. And it's not only about addiction, but the person that loved the addict, the, in this case, it was a woman alcoholic, and her husband was codependent, which if you are in a relationship of addiction, there's always the partner who's codependent. And so this movie addressed both both sides. And there's one with Sa- uh, Sandra Bullock called 28 Days, where she goes to treatment. And there's a newer one out called Thank You for Sharing with Gwyneth Paltrow. And it's about sex addiction. So, you know, there's so many kinds of addictions and problems in our lives. And that was, I watched just recently, was excellent show. And, of course, the founder of the 12 Steps, the person that originated all this, William, uh, his real name was Bill Wilson. Uh, he went by Bill. And uh, he also had a partner called Dr. Bob. And together they put the 12 Steps together. And that story is in a movie called My Name is Bill W., So that tells you how it all got started in the very beginning. So now we're going to talk that the 12 Steps is not a religious program, as some people would like to turn it into or make it. It's really a spiritual program. And there's a huge difference between the two. Um, Religious dogma and doctrine is not part of this program. In this program, there is a God you understand called a higher power, or you can label it anything you choose. In different cultures, you know, some cultures have Allah, some have Jehovah. Different uh, countries have their religious uh, words that mean the same thing. It's a higher energy in our lives that we can draw from in our hearts. So a 12-step program is sets guiding principles rather than dogma. And it outlines a course of action for recovery so that you don't have that compulsion or that behavior or that thinking anymore. And you then can move out of your illness, disease, or addiction. And it's a method of recovery that has been uh, in lots of people have, over millions of people have actually recovered from the 12 steps. And can you believe he has outsold Norman Vincent Peale's Power of Positive Thinking. This book has sold over 30 million copies, people. That's really impressive. I'm an author. I haven't sold 30 million copies yet, but if you pick up my Paradigm Busters book, Reveal the Real You, you'll get some more 12-step help. So uh, hopefully, if you're looking for other books besides the book of Alcoholics Anonymous, my book could help you greatly. I follow along the pattern that they suggest, but it's for all parts of your life, not just an addiction. 
And so we are going to be talking about the different types of addiction, different types of illnesses. Actually, there's probably more than 100 different people or groups that use the 12 steps. So we're going to come back and find out what those 12 steps are. I am Marilyn Redmond. You're listening to Love Never Fails. And we're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned to find out what the 12 steps are really about. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline, and she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes, and she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion. And then together, we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. I am Marilyn Redmond. You're listening to Love Never Fails. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And since we're live, we're available for your phone calls. So put your pencil to the paper and write down 866-451-1451 and give us a call if you have some concerns or comments or just have something to add to our conversation today, 12 Steps into Grace. And if you have a comment, give us a call. We were talking about different types of 12-step programs, and they can include not only addictions, but gambling and smoking are addictions, but they have their own 12-step programs. Prescription drugs, different kinds of drugs, overeaters and uh, eating disorders use 12 steps. Family and friends of people who have these difficulties come to the 12 steps, and Al-Anon is for the family and friends of those in addiction or other acting out behaviors, and uh, there's even CODA for codependent people. And if you don't know what that is, it's the person that is addicted to the person who's addicted to the problem. (laughs) So uh, it seems like we line up with each other. So if somebody's addicted, you're probably addicted to them, even if we don't realize it. So when we go to these programs, we pass on our experience, strength, and hope to ever is there needing, looking for answers and support. So if you're acting out, you know, if you're taking a toe to hit, a bed, a puff, bite, if you're cutting yourself, uh, acting out on thoughts that you really don't want to act out on, uh, right now there's 2 million members in 180 countries applying the 12 steps into their lives. Uh, but, uh, this is just for one 12-step program AA. So think of all the other 12-step programs, how many millions of people are actually using these in their life daily. It only takes a day to learn how it works, so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, but it takes a lifetime to, to practice it. I've been practicing it for 33 years at this point. I've been to half a dozen different 12-step programs. I seem to have a lot of problems I had to overcome in my life. And I had to find out I wasn't a bad person, but I was a sick person needing to get well. And that's what the 12 steps have done for me. So the first thing I had to learn was I was had to admit I was powerless over whatever it was a drug, an acting out behavior, 
uh, and my life had become unmanageable. And I was very codependent in those days. And uh, my sponsor at the program says, Marilyn, you're powerless over your husband, (laughs) and your life has become unmanageable. (laughs) And that's exactly what was going on. I was trying to get him to change. (laughs) You know, that's a big laugh because nobody can change another person, I found out later. So I was powerless. I'm powerless over that person or that prescription that I took. Doctors gave me prescriptions, and I got addicted. And I was powerless over that. And in my case, it was so unmanageable. I literally tried suicide and my husband was trying to kill me. It was a mess. And so, you know, it doesn't matter what the addiction is, what the problem, what the illness is. I've also used it to heal mental illness. I've used it to heal uh, different diseases and illnesses in my uh, life, you know, as far as the different problems that come up in our life. So I was restless, irritable, and discontented, and I was trying to make things go my way so things would be better. I just thought if my husband quit drinking, then life would be wonderful. Um, But it's addiction is kind of like an allergy. It triggers the body, and then we take the compulsive behavior is to act out. And uh, it's a lie that sometime in the future you will get that really great feeling the first time you used or cut or uh, had some compulsion that you needed, felt you had to do some ritual or whatever to be safe or protect yourself. And the first time you did that, uh, you felt really good. And you think, oh, wow, you know, this behavior is going to work for me. Well, if it's a dysfunctional behavior, if it's not productive, if it's not positive, actually, in the long run, it just gets worse and worse. And it does become very powerless in your life. You have no way to overcome it. And it's uh, AMA, the American Medical Association, declared addictions a disease in 1956. It's a chronic progressive disease that leads to death or insanity without intervention. And it's not necessarily just alcoholism. If you have if you're acting out in some other way running from reality, uh, that's an addiction because we have to face the, what's going on in our lives right now and be honest and step up to the plate. So honesty is really what step one is about, and we have to get out of our denial. Denial is not a river in Egypt. It means I'm not facing reality. And uh, and I have to admit that to myself, that I'm doing all these other behaviors so I don't have to face reality. Of course, they aren't working for me. And uh, if you're interested, I actually went to see the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest because... That's where my husband's grandfather died, was in the institution that film was uh, made. And he wanted to see what that place looked like. So we actually went to the movie. And today you don't have to go to an institution to get help. They actually didn't have the 12 steps. They didn't have the answers in those days for addictions and acting out behaviors. And we're so fortunate today that we have help available. We have these programs. All we have to do is you go and show up and find out what's going on. And we have to have the willingness to do the work, the honesty to get honest with ourselves and be open-minded to any prejudice or experiences that uh, we might have had in the past. So I, I always say open-mindedness means I open up my mind to the higher power to run my life today because I sure didn't know how to do it. The beautiful part of this program is there's no fees to pay, no access to grind, assistance is free, there's no arguments, debates, or lectures to endure, and you don't have to people please. Couldn't have a better solution, a free solution. Usually you have to put a buck or two in the pot for coffee and the use of the room but that's cheaper than going to a lot of different seminars and lectures and psychiatrists and whatever so 12-step programs is really a wonderful way to get answers and it doesn't have to cost a fortune and if you're willing to go to any lengths to get past your addiction past your using your obsession whatever the problem is if you're a shopaholic i heard a lady say one time she says when i go shopping i have a spiritual experience (laughs) 
Well, shopping was her addiction. So we come into the 12 steps so we can have a spiritual experience without it costing us a fortune. So when we come back, we're going to be uh, talking about steps two and three and moving on through the steps. So stay with us. I am Marilyn Redman. You are on Love Never Fails, and we are coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. I'm your host, Marilyn Redmond. You are listening to Love Never Fails. We are on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we are waiting for your calls, 866-451-1451. And we're ready to start step two. So here we go. Step two is came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Well, that gave me hope. It gave me a sense that maybe there's a way out of my hell, because that's how it felt. My life was miserable. It was terribly scary. I always lived in fear, guilt, and shame. I didn't think there was any way out. That's why I tried suicide. I felt like I was in a corner with no answers, hopeless and helpless. And now I'm being told there's a power greater than myself that could restore me to sanity. Well, that's interesting because I didn't know I was insane. What I've discovered is if you're coming from fear, that's a lack of sanity. And, of course, when you have that cause, if fear is the cause in your life, then the results are going to be irrational. So everything I tried to do, I tried to control situations so I wouldn't be hurt. seems like they'd fall apart. I'd try to do whatever I could as hard as desperately as I can to be nicer or sweeter or whatever so I wouldn't get hurt one more time. And it just never pulled off. So the doctor, psychiatrist, gave me some Valium and... Through that process of taking prescriptions, I eventually knew my body told me I was dying. Prescriptions are toxic. They're drugs that are poison. We don't talk about medicine being a poison that we're putting in our system, but it actually was causing me to die. And so I had to find out when I got to step two that deep down in every man, woman, and child is the fundamental idea of God. It may be there by calamity, by pomp, by worship of other things, but in some form or other it's there. For faith in a power greater than ourselves and miraculous demonstrations of that power in our lives are facts as old as man himself. We finally saw that faith in some kind of a God was a power part of our makeup and just as much a feeling as we have for a friend. Sometimes we had to search fearlessly, but he was there. He was as much a fact as we were, and we found the great reality 
deep down within us. I had never lived in reality, and that's insanity. I had to uncover all the craziness that had covered up the sanity and let it go so I could move into being a healthy, happy, joyful person, which I didn't think in those days was even possible. And I found out that when I'm doing releasing all the calamity and harm that had happened to my life, I could actually open up my heart, which is step three, and uh, let that love out. I never was safe to open my heart and leave those old ideas behind because I was taught love hurts. And so who wants to open their heart and get hurt again? That's where I came from. It was really tough to say, yes, I do believe there's a power greater than myself, and that power is love, and it isn't going to hurt me. And if I open up my heart to that, actually, that's where the grace can come into my life. But I have some work to do to make that happen. So I had to move on to step three. Made a decision to turn my life and will over to the care of God as we understood him. That was really new to me. I was told in church how to think about God. And in 12-step programs, you can define what God is to you. You can have your own definition. Uh, my ideas of God have changed over the years from my church God to a spiritual energy realm of spirit today that's an energy in all of us, that loving energy that supports us and gives us life in the trees, the gla- grass, the animals, and, of course, us. So I had to learn about faith because step three is about faith. And my church never talked about faith. I didn't know what you were talking about. (laughs) I didn't understand until I got to the 12 steps. But when I heard that I could turn my life and will over to God, of my understanding, that was the best offer I ever had. That was my way out of hell. I could go up. I could go move from hell or darkness, as it's described in the Bible, into the light, into the light of a God of my understanding. Oh, that's a marvelous promise that I was. I took very, very seriously because I figured that was my way out. So spiritual progress, not perfection. And gradually we just walk closer and closer into the light. And it's uh, not a train at the end of the tunnel, people. There really is a light, and it's actually within us. And we clear away the darkness and the things covering it up. So, you know, it's about cause and effect. If we get rid of the fear, then we can actually have the cause of love in our lives and perpetuate love. And, of course, that's what's going to come back. What I give out is what comes back. You know, what goes around comes around. So cause and effect means I'm going to be no longer a fear-based person. I am going to change into being a love-based person. And that love comes back to me wonderfully nowadays. Um, I had cut myself off from that love, trying to protect myself from all the harm. And I didn't have to do that anymore. I'd sat in the pew for 50 years, but I was still dying inside. I looked good on the outside, but that was not what was going on on the inside. And uh, step three gave me a choice. I can move out of that pain and of the past. Um, well, I was using the Valium and other prescriptions that I was given. I lost my power of choice uh, drugs stop that for people and comp- obsessive compulsive behaviors stop your choice and that someday you will get better while you're in the disease is just an illusion so if we move out of the step three we think the troubles are basically of our own making because we've been at cause in fear and uh When you're in fear, you become a control freak. (laughs) I sure did, trying to cover all the bases. And uh, I was just trying to survive in an adult world, but I was a little kid that never grew up from the fear. It stopped my emotional growth. And now with the steps, I could actually let that fear go and become what churches would call reborn. I no longer have to be a fear-based person. Today, I'm fearless. I know their fear is an illusion, and I don't have to buy into it. Thank you. And so when I'm in that loving presence of God, all is well. And I don't have to harm myself or hurt myself or separate from that love. And a very, very powerful prayer goes along with step three. 
God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self, that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties, that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. And when I abandoned myself to God, I became kind of like the arms of God. God could flow through me to help others, and I didn't have to be sending out that fear. And sadly, I wanted to be a loving mother, but I didn't have love to give to my children. And today, through the steps, I've cleaned out that fear, guilt, and shame, uh, jealousy, envy, all the seven deadly sins, and I can be a channel of that love today. And I don't have to uh, perpetuate And cause trouble to other people because I'm not sending love to them. So um, we have a love-based life. And to do that, there is some work that goes with it, which is called step four. And we're going to be coming back and finding out what step four is because that's when things really start to get better in your life. I'm Marilyn Redmond, and you are on... Love Never Fails. We are coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Wait No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Wait No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Wait No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Wait No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. I'm your host, Marilyn Redmond. You're listening to Love Never Fails. We are on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we're talking about 12 Steps into Grace. And when we get to Step 4, that's getting to the real meat and potatoes of the 12 Steps. We're making a fearless and fearless searching moral inventory of ourselves, and that takes courage to look at yourself and be totally honest with what you're going on that's bothering you to find the symptoms but the problem is the symptoms will then show up what's the root cause because our acting out our addictions our um, cutting ourselves I've had several questions about that on the internet lately Uh, depression all these things have a root cause in our lives and so we have to get down to causes and conditions and yes we have resentments and um That comes from anger that's over and over repeated in our thinking, and it takes up rent-free space, and that's all your mind is on. And uh, Edgar Cayce, the father of holistic health, said anger can destroy the brain as well as any disease, for it is itself a disease of the mind. So we have had all kinds of illness going on we probably weren't even aware of. So we were not only mentally, which is our anger and resentments, and physically ill, which is the reason that we're seeking doctors because we're physically getting worse all the time. We have been spiritually sick. 
And when the spiritual malady is overcome, we straighten out mentally and physically. And I've used that in all parts of my life to change my medical conditions. A spiritual answer does resolve those things. I had to get rid of pride, vanity, being egotistical, self-pity, morbid, jealous, all those different things that got in the way of my connecting with the love of the universe. And if you're interested in finding a chart of all those things that you need to release, uh, I have a copy, a page I can send you. Uh, I'll be glad to do that. Marilyn, M-A-R-I-L-Y-N, at AngelicasGifts.com. Or buy my book, Paradigm Busters, Reveal the Real You. And you'll find all kinds of information for releasing the things that are breaking you and stopping you from that love of the universe. So step four Take the courage to get honest with yourself, and then you find an honest person you can trust. Maybe it's a minister. uh, Maybe it's a really good friend that's not going to share your secrets because you want to, you know, this is, problems are we have secrets we're hiding from other people. We're not really having the life that's truly us. We're playing a game, you might say. So step five puts us into integrity, and we have to get rid of all our secrets, and we need to find somebody we trust. In 12-step programs, they are usually called your sponsor. They usually know who you are, what you're trying to do to improve your life, and they're trustworthy because they've done it themselves. So you find somebody that you can admit to them and to God and another human being the exact nature of your wrongs. So what we're doing is we're cleaning out our insides to match what we're talking about on our outsides. And integrity, Billy, is the answer if you want to grow up and outgrow your childish reactions to life. It's important to have somebody that you can trust and talk about these things. If you don't express it, then you're going to stay just as sick as you were. So if you don't have a person in your life you can trust, go find a counselor. That's what counseling's all about, is to clean out those things and to get them out of your system. You have to release that energy for new energy to come in. The loving energy has to have space, and you have to get rid of the old. Leave some space for the new to come in. Uh, So now we move on to step six, and we're ready to let go, let God remove from us all the things which we have admitted are objectionable. So we have the willingness to let go our childish reactions and grow up. Step six is I'm willing to step up to the bat. You know, I watched a baseball game for Little League on television last night and step up to the bat, hit the ball because you're ready to go out there and run the bases of life. And step six gives you that permission, say you're, you're willing to do it, and they allow you to do it. So, But I know today, growing up is not for sissies. So getting up to the base and hitting that ball, uh, you don't have to cling on to the past. You can literally move out of your pain and misery. And into step seven, when we ask, actually humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. And what this does, this step brings us into humility. And humility is saying, I'm not running the show. There's a higher power that actually has a plan and design for me that is better than I can figure out. I think I'll let him. So I can't do this. I've tried it, and it's up to me to say, okay, God, I'm going to let you run the show. You can be the director. You can be my guidance. You can give me the answers. And I, my problem was I looked outside for answers, and if I'd followed my minister's information, I wouldn't be sitting in this chair today. He didn't believe in divorce. If I've kept on with my medical answers that I was getting, I would be dead because the medicines were killing me. The prescriptions are toxic poison. So I had to quit looking outside for answers. And, you know, I found the answers within. By the time I got to step 11, we'll talk about meditation in a minute. But the answers are within each one of us. The answers are not out there with experts or out of books. I had to find out what my answers were, not somebody else's. And then I can move into loving grace when I release what isn't the truth about myself, what isn't the right things that I need to be thinking and doing and saying. I release those and I just replace it with love and grace. I was in Death Valley meditating several years ago. And it was a gorgeous day, and I laid down on the, uh, the sleeping bag in the tent, and I started meditating. And that was the first day I felt grace from head 
to toe. I had cleaned out so much of what was in the way, my old thinking, my old behaviors, my old thoughts, and I gave it all to God in step seven. And I was told in meditation to replace what I gave away to rehab come in love and grace. <clears throat> and that really changed my life when I saw how good I felt. Why didn't I want to continue with the rest of the steps? So when we come back, we'll finish with the talking more about how you can get that grace in your life, too. I'm your host, Marilyn Redman. You're listening to Love Never Fails. And we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. I am Marilyn Redmond, and this is Love Never Fails. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And our phone number is 866-451-1451. So we're still waiting for your phone call. I just want to give you a little few more minutes about what Step 7 offers. What you're releasing and letting go is your false pride, your arrogance, your jealousy, suspicions, envy, selfishness, self-seeking, dishonest, lying, stealing, intolerance, inconsiderate, greed, lust, infidelity, hate, anger, resentments, procrastination, impatience, blaming others. Oh, if you're blaming somebody, there's three fingers pointing back, people. And you're the one that's causing the trouble, and you're only looking at them because they're a mirror to you. So we quit blaming and take responsibility for what's going on. And what you're going to be letting in, in place of those old ideas, you're going to bring in humility, trust, contentment, unselfishness, helpful of others, honesty, integrity, restitution, tolerance, acceptance, generosity, Faithfulness, intimacy, forgiveness, love, patience, faith, courage. You're going to become a responsible and accountable with courtesy and kindness for all. Doesn't that make you a different person? And you won't want to use any drugs. You won't want to cut yourself or, or go shopping or be a gambler or do all those things to feel good because you're going to feel good naturally. And it does feel terrific to have joy pop in because you've just done something really nice for somebody instead of being selfish. So step eight is going to take us one step further. Instead of cleaning out our side of the street inside, now we're going to clean out our side of the street in regards to other people. So we make a list of all the people we harmed and we become willing to make amends to them. And this is called brotherly love. You know, we're setting the record straight, and it might be with a spouse or a family member, relative, former boss, friend, fellow employee, and includes yourself. We're going to 
put ourselves on the list because when I talked with my psychiatrist at one point, he saw my list and he said, the person you forgot to put down was yourself. You need to forgive yourself. So uh, whenever we're checking our list of uh, people we're going to make an amends to, uh, be sure to include yourself. And you may have to repay some money or repair some damage done. Uh, you might have to be more responsible, honest, and respectful. Uh, and, you know, this is really important that we take these steps to be with these people and show that we are changing into a better person. I had to go make an amends to a teacher across the hall from me. I'd taken something off her desk, and she was livid. Uh, I was just being dang, downright lazy to make my own. And uh, so when I got out of treatment, I had to go over because I was full of anxiety being around her. I had, was wrong. I was wrong. So the next day when I had more time, the first day back from treatment, I was just overwhelmed. So the next morning I went extra early and I told her I need to talk to you a minute. So I made my amends, told her, you know, I, I was sorry about the situation. In this case, there was no money involved or damage done other than I wasn't doing it anymore. And uh, she took my acceptance. She accepted my amends, of my apology. I actually ran into her several years later, and she never brought it up, never said a word. Some people won't accept it, people, but you don't do it for there to say you're okay. You do it to clean out your insides. You have taken responsibility. Step eight and nine is about doing the right thing. Doing the right thing is never wrong. Have you ever figured that one out? So it's important to step up and say, yes, I did this, and what can I do to make it right? And that's called justice. So with step nine, made direct amends to, ju to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. And you're putting yourself into the balancing scales of justice. You are no longer <clears throat> out of balance. You, you've taken responsibility. You're setting the record straight. And you take care of what never needs to be done to replace the damage. Some, I've heard some people say several years later, oh, I finally paid off the loan that I took out from this friend of mine. And uh, gradually I've been able to pay it off and I'm debt free. You know, and sometimes it takes a while to set up the back problems that we've done until they get current and we can move on. Don't jump too fast into making your amends. Um, I jumped too fast into making an amends with my mother, according to my psychiatrist. And um, it turned out I wasn't responsible for her feelings. And, of course, in my old days, I wanted to make everybody feel good and feel happy so they'd like me. And I so it was a huge learning lesson is how people respond to you is their choice. But I just have to keep my side of the street clean. And then I have a new freedom and a new happiness I've never had before. Peace of mind started coming in. I started feeling like a different person. My fears and anxieties and resentments left from childhood problems and my marriage as I addressed each of those. I took responsibility. I grew up. That's what this is all about. So when you get to step 10, you're actually in the current now. You're not living off the past harms motivating your actions. Now, instead of being selfish, you're being selfless. And you are now that channel. You've cleaned out. You've purified your heart. You've mended your soul, and you can be that adult, mature person. But we have to do it on a daily basis. Uh, it's important to stay current in your life and not let resentments or angers, fears creep in from the past again and to stay current and address them each day so you can stay in that loving, joyful place, happy, joyous, and free of the ego. And I don't have to listen to my head tell me what to do, which is not in my best interest in the first place, because it keeps me in fear. I get to move from my head to my heart. 18 inches, my spiritual teacher says, that's what the program's about. We move from our head into our heart. No longer from fear, we've moved into being a love-based person. With love and tolerance becomes my policy. And each day, I just try to be a better person than I was the day before. And guess what? That's my future. I don't have to worry about the future anymore because I'm creating it 
right now. I'm creating a better future by being that person I am right now today with kindness and loving for everyone. So it's important if you want to on a daily basis see how you're doing with your progress. I have a chart that you I can send you. Uh, it's a one page like a calendar and each day you can mark off how did you do with being generous or how did you do were you selfish today and so if you email me at Marilyn m-a-r-i-l-y-n angelicasgifts.com i'll be glad to send you a copy of the daily chart and stay tuned for steps 11 and 12 i'm Marilyn redmond we're coming to you on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and this is Love Never Fails. We'll be back with the rest of the steps. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. I'm your host, Marilyn Redmond, and you're listening to Love Never Fails. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're talking about Steps into Grace today. And if you've just been talk- listening about Step 10, you're going to not be fighting your medical problem, your illness, whatever acting out, compulsive th- that you're doing. You'll quit fighting it. You won't even be avoiding the t- uh, temptation to do it. You'll feel like you're in a new position of neutrality, safe and protected. You haven't sworn off the addiction. You instead, the problem has been removed because you've replaced it with the positive, loving energy of the truth of who you are. So doing the right thing is never wrong. And I just love this story of uh, Spella was talking with Michelangelo, who sculpted uh, the statue of David. And I like this story because when I was in New York for the World's Fair, I got to see the piata he sculpted. It was absolutely magnetizing. I, oh, the power in that statue was unbelievable. They actually had a moving sidewalk in front of it, or I probably would have been there for the rest. I don't know how long. It was just absolutely amazing, the energy, and that was wonderful. And so somebody asked Michelangelo, he says, so how do you know what parts to sculpt when you're sculpting David? And his answer was, well, I just chip out the parts that aren't David. And that's what the 12 steps do for us. We just get rid of the parts that aren't really truly who we are. So you don't have to swear off anything. You just become a new person, a new creature in the love of God. Step 11 is sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him. Praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. I'd like to explain that prayer is lifting your heart up to connecting with that higher power. It's like tuning on your radio. You have different radio stations and you tune into the frequency that you want to connect with. Well, that's exactly what goes on with meditation. You go into prayer, you connect, you might have a little prayer that you want to say and it will connect you with a higher consciousness. And when you get that connection of peace and quiet, be still and know that I am God. That meditation, that silent voice could be quiet, could be a soft voice talking to you inside. It may be a knowing or an intuition or even a hunch, but pay attention to it. I meditated for a whole year. I was in exhaustion. The doctor put me flat on my back. I was in such bad shape from being such a good people pleaser and overachiever. 
And I listened to that silent voice giving me directions and information and feedback. And then the next year when I was meditating, he put me in a, I was in a situation out of state, abandoned, and I went to the beach to meditate. What do I do now, God? And I had to apply what I'd been hearing in meditation and put the rubber to the road. I had to act on it. Scared the dickens out of me because I was so codependent in those days to ask for a temporary temporary uh, separation was not a scare it was a scary thing to do so act on what you get in meditation and then when you've had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps you carry the message to others that are still suffering and you practice these principles in all your affairs and they have healed my life at this point i am not the same person i used to be and i can contribute to life today and I do a lot of volunteer work, a lot of um, in museums, food banks, nursing homes, sick neighbors. Well, you name it, you, there's a lot of people out there that need help. So I hope that today you've learned that you can trust God, clean house, and help others. And you can clean out your past and move into the grace that you were created in. Check out my website at Angelica's Gifts. My books are at Amazon.com. I have a blog Marilyn Redmond Books, blogspot.com. And I have over 100 YouTubes on YouTube. So if you're interested in lectures, interviews, and spiritual information, check it out. And uh, next week, we're going to be back with Finding Balance in Your Lives. So next Tuesday afternoon, don't miss this show. And if you want to hear this show again, check out the archives. Click on my name. Uh, there's a little green tab. Click on that one and then scroll down to the archives. All the shows are still available. And if you want to hear another show, sometimes over and over until you get all the information that you need, just check out the archives. We're always here for you. And if you want those charts, email me, Marilyn, at Angelica's Gifts. Be in joy, gratitude, and the presence of love. Feeling good in reality. I am Marilyn Redmond. You have been listening to Love Never Fails, and we have been coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. You've been listening to Love Never Fails with your host, Marilyn Redmond. Go beyond old ideas and understandings and hear Marilyn's solutions to healing and a higher consciousness each week here on Marilyn Redmond's Love Never Fails. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.